Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 12. And we are on page number 10. Please turn to it. Page number 10, we are in the process of doing some problem dealing with the notion of multiplication of decimals. Page number 10, please turn to it. First example, example number 1, is asking us 75.7, 75.7 times 2.1. Now before we actually do the work, even though I realize it's a very simple, very straightforward problem, it doesn't take that long to do it, but still I want you to get in the habit of looking at the exam in a certain way, so that when you get into a more complicated problem, which are very time consuming, you understand what's going on here. Before we do any work at all, you must have some idea as to what sort of answer we're looking for, what should be the answer approximately. It's very simple. Forget about 75.7, forget about 0.7, forget about 0.1, look at simply 75 times 2. 75 times 2 is 150 obviously, 150 is 75 times 2, it's not 75, it's 75.7, it's not 2, it's 2.1, so the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly more than 150. Now if you happen to find, as I always remind you, if you happen to find just one answer choice among the four that is slightly over 150, then you're done, you don't have to waste your time actually doing it out. Do you understand? Let's do it out. 75.7, this is how we do it, 75.7, so the trick here, when you're multiplying numbers involving decimals, the trick here is to ignore the decimal in the beginning. We'll take care of the decimal points at the very end. Pretend it's 757 times 21. Times 21. And when we get the answer at the end, we'll deal with the decimal. And this is where it comes in handy knowing what you're looking for. We're looking for something over 150 so that where it helps us locate our decimal points also. Do you understand? In the event that you end up making some careless mistakes, uh, mistake in putting in, in placing your decimal point knowing that you're looking for something more than 150 will alert you that something has gone wrong it should not have been 1500 it should not have been fi uh, 15 it should be about 150 let's see we have to multiply by 1 1 times 757 is just going to be 757 we're done with the unit digit let's move on to 10 digit 2 sevens are 14 that's 4 carry 1 Two fives are two fives are ten plus one is eleven. One carry one. Two sevens are fourteen plus one is fifteen. And the answer it is seven nine eight five one. Now even before even without explaining anything what's going on, you can clearly see what the answer is going to be because we're looking for something over one fifty. It's hundred and fifty eight. 158.97 as a matter of fact, 159 almost. So where is the decimal point? It's very simple, very straightforward. This is what you do. This is what we do. Here is 75.7, here is 2.7. So this one has one, one place after decimal. This one has another place after decimal. We have to move our decimal two places. Our decimal right now is sitting right here. This is where our decimal is right now. We have to move it two places. We pick it up and move it two places. One, two. It ends up here. The answer is 158.97, about 159. We said it was going to be over 150, slightly over 150. And there is only going to be one answer choice. If it turns out that there are more than two, two answer choices that are slightly over 150, which is highly, highly unlikely, but if that's the case, then you do it out. Then you do out the bloody thing. Let's do number two. Number two is also very straightforward, very simple. They're looking for 0 0.002 times 3.4. This is number two, example number two. 0 0.002 times 3.4. Just simply look at 34 times 2. 34 times 2 is 68. And now we take care of our decimal point. Okay, here we go. How many decimal places do we have after? In this one, we have three of them. One, two, three. How many do we have here? Here is the decimal point. We have one. So we take our decimal point here. 68 is our answer. Our answer was 68, 68.0. We're going to move it four places. One, two, one, two, three, four places to the left. One, two, three, four. It's going to end up here. So we have to insert two zeros, two zeros. The answer is 0 0.0068, 0 0.0068.
Let's do the next one. 3.41 3.41 times 7 3.41 times 7 Now the reason why we did not bother to do the approximation here is because it was too simple. It's just 34 times 2 is 68 and you move the decimal places. Here, let's do a quick approximation before we begin our work. We are given 3.41. Let's pretend that it is a pr that it, let's pretend that it is three and a half. I was about to say let's pretend that it is approximately three and a half. That'll be a silly thing to say, because uh, uh, it is approximately three and a half. It'd be wrong to pretend it is approximately three and a half. What I meant to say is that let's pretend that 3.41. Let's pretend 3.41 is three and a half, or let's approximately 3.41 is three and a half. So what we have is three and a half times seven. Will you be able to very quickly what three and a half times seven is? This is how it was. Seven times three and a half. Break it up. Break up the three and three and a half separately. Seven times three is twenty-one plus seven times a half. How much are seven halves? Do you know how much are seven halves? Let's find out, shall we? How much are seven halves? Well, we know that two halves make a one. Two halves make a one. If I have four halves, that's a two. If I have two more halves, that's a three. Six half, six half make a three, which makes perfect sense because this is six half. Six half make a three because six divided by two is three. Six half make a three, therefore seven halves. This is going to be seven times a half. Right here is what we're doing. We did, we did three times seven. Now we do three times, three times half. Three times a half. Three times half is seven halves. Seven halves is simply. We know six halves are three. 6 halves are 3, 7 halves is 3 and a half. So it's going to be, the answer is going to be approximately 24 and a half. Answer is going to be approximately 24 and a half. Is that an overestimation or is that an underestimation? Can you tell? It is an overestimation. This is an overestimation. Why is it an overestimation? Because we do not have 3 and a half, we do not have 3.5, we have 3.4. We are, we are rounding 3 point, we are pretending that 3.4 is 3.5. This is an overestimation. That tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, because this is an overestimation, that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly under it. So we put a negative sign on top. Negative sign reminds me, let's that, that, raise this part so we don't confuse. The negative sign on the top reminds us, this negative sign on the top reminds us that correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly less than 24 and a half. In the event that you find two answer choices, one slightly more than 24 and a half, one slightly less than 24 and a half, you need to know which one to pick. That's the whole point. You, are, you want to be able to identify the answer without actually doing the damn thing out. Let's do it out. 341, we're going to pretend. It is 341. 341 times 7. You have to know your time table. As I keep reminding you, you must know your time tables. And if you want to learn your time tables, 1 through 12, this is what you want to watch. Basic math. Basic math. The 1 through 12 is which will help you will help you memorize your timetables from 1 through 12. This series right here, basic math, it goes all the way up to 200. You don't have to watch all of them. Just watch the first 12 to learn your timetables. You have to know your table of 7. 7 ones are 7. 7 fours are 28. 8 carry 2. 7, 3 is like 21, plus 2 is 23. Now we take care of our decimal. Now we're going to go and take care of our decimal. This guy doesn't have any decimal place. This is, this, is, this, this is just 7. Here we have decimal and then 1 and 2. So we have to take our decimal, which is right here, and move it two places, 1 and 2, right here. Which of course was no surprise to us. Which of course was no surprise to us, because we already knew the answer is going to be around 24. There you go, that's around 24. 23.87 is 24. We said it's going to be approximately 20, 24 and a half and we also said that the correct answer is going to be slightly under it. This was an overestimation. So this is another sort of a way to being able to know from the very beginning what the answer should look like at the end, approximately what it should helps a great deal in terms of keeping track of your decimals. Let's continue then. We're going to go to the next page. Well, we are on the next page. I didn't realize it. We are on page number 10 right now. We are going to go to sample problems. So this, this is page number 11 now, not 10. Page 11. Let's do the sample problems.
Now listen carefully. Listen carefully to what I have to say. I understand that you're preparing for Hesse, which is why you're here. You can see there on this page, page number 11, they give you only 10 problems for practice. 10 problems just to practice is, in my opinion, it's not enough. If you feel the same way, if you feel that you need more practice, if you, need to, if you feel that you need to work on the more problems to get a little bit better, I'm going to ask you to watch three videos. Make sure you watch those videos. As I said, it will help you get better prepared. And the videos are going to be... Days 8, 9 and 10. Sorry. Seven, eight, and nine. Just type in T is math, T is math, day eight or day seven, day eight, day nine. Watch those three videos. And when I say watch, I don't mean simply sit there passively staring at the screen. That is not what I call doing the math uh, math lesson. You must do the pro you must do the problems with me. As I as I said at the problem, you must do the problems with me. You must have a dedicated notebook where you do all your work. And as I set up the problem, pause the video, do it yourself, and then compare your work. Or compare your work against the work that we do together. That's how we learn. Sample so problem number one. Problem number one tells us 0 .003, 0 .003 times 4.23. Again, it's very straightforward, very simple. We simply have to multiply 423 by 3 and then we'll worry about the decimal. 423 times 3 times 3, 3 3 is a 9, 2 3 is a 6, and 4 3 is a 12. That's our answer. The question is, where is the decimal going to fall? That is not what I have in my notebook here. 423, 423 times Yeah, that is what I have. What the hell was I doing? Okay. Where is the decimal going to fall? Let's find out how many places we have to move it. Here in this one we have we have point zero zero three. It has three decimal places. This one is four point two three, it has one and two. So we need to pick up our decimal point which is right here. We need to pick it up and move it one, two, three, four, five places. Five places to the left. Let's do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right here. We have an opening here, that's our 0 is going to go. That's a 0. You have to put a 0 there. So the answer is, the answer is going to be 0 0.01269. 0 0.01269. Let's move on, shall we, to the next one. Number two. Number two. Second one says ninety-eight point two six times eight. How much is this going to be approximately? Well, this should be approximately eight hundred. Ninety-six point two six. If we were to pretend that this is one hundred, then this is approximately one hundred times eight. The correct answer is whatever it is. It's going to be around 100. The question is, is this an estimation of 800? Is this estimation of 800? Is this an, an overestimation or is this an over underestimation? Well, we are pretending that 98.26 is 100. We are overestimating it. This is an overestimation. Since this is an overestimation, that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly less than that. You put a negative sign on top of it, circle it so you can see it. Correct answer, whatever it is, if you happen to find one answer choice that is slightly under 800, that's your guy. Do you understand? Let's do it out. 9, 8, just, what should we do it? 9, 8, 2, 6, times 8. Again, you have to know your table of 8, otherwise you're not going to get anywhere, otherwise you're going to sit there and struggle. Yeah, struggle is not what you want to do. Nervous is not what you want to be in the exam. Do you understand? You must re remain calm. You must remain collected. Calm and collected. And the only way you can stay calm and collected is to know your stuff. Know what you're dealing with. 
knowing the tables 1 through 12 is must it is essential it is crucial 8 6 are 48 8 6 are 48 8 carry 4 2 8 is 16 16 plus 4 is 20 0 carry 2 8 8 is 64 64 plus 2 is 66 6 carry 6 9 8 is how much are 9 8 9 8 when we say 9 8 you can look you can read this as 9 you can this can be written as this can be written as 9 8 or it can be written as it can be it can be read as 8 9s 8 9s and 9 8s is going to give you the same number same answer 8 times 9 of course is same as 9 times 8 so how much are 9 8s i don't know what 9 8s are let's work on 8 9s let's work on 8 9s 8 9s no let's take 9 8s how much are 9 8s I don't know how much nine eights are. I know how much how much is how much is ten ten eights. If I have ten of ten eights, eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. If I have ten of them, that's eighty. That I do know. Ten eights are eighty. That's how we speak. Ten eights are eighty. Nine eights should be eight less than eighty. You just take away one eight. If you take away one eight from eighty, that's seventy-two. Seventy-two plus six. Seventy-two plus six is seventy-eight. Now we'll take care of our decimal. Okay? We'll take care of our decimal. Oh, there's only two of them here. One, two, that's it. So pick up your decimal which is sitting right here and move it two places. One and two, it's gonna end up right here. Yeah. Yeah, of course it's gonna move it right here. Where else will it be? We, that will be a silly thing for me to say, because we already established it's gonna be a little under 800. That's gonna be a little under 800, 786. If you were to move this decimal to here, it will become 7860. 7860 is too large. We said it's a little under 800. If you move, if you were to put the decimal here, it would have been 878.6. That's too small. Obviously, 786. What else would it be? So even without worrying about this part, you can immediately tell just by looking at it. The answer is 786. It has to be because it's a little under 800. You see? Let's do the next one. Number three. Number three. Eight point zero three. Eight point zero three times two point one times two point one again before any before doing any work at all you should be able to estimate immediately you should be able to tell yourself what you're looking for it's very simple it's just eight times two eight times two is sixteen it's going to be approximately sixteen but appro appro but approximately sixteen which way approximately sixteen as in a little bit more than sixteen or approximately sixteen as in a little bit less than sixteen in other words. We must be cognizant whether that is an whether this is an overestimation or an underestimation. Let's find out, shall we? It is 8.03. We pretended it was 8. Well, that's an underestimation. We are underestimating it. 2.1, we are pretending it is 2. That's also an underestimation. Since we are both, we are, we are both, we are approximately both numbers a little bit down, this represents here an underestimation. Therefore, that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, since this 16 is an underestimation, that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, has got to be slightly more than 16. Slightly more than 16. Put a plus sign on top of it and put a uh, circle so you can see it easily. Let's do it out, shall we? 803 times 21. Times 21. And if it bothers you, my putting this multiplication sign here, that's not what I meant to say. It's supposed to go here. 803 times 1 is just 803. That's very simple. We're done with the unit digit. We are still going to start at 10 digits, so we hold the unit digit. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 0 is 0. And 8 to the 16. There you go, 16. You see, 16.8. 3, 6, 8, 6, 1, 6. Now we take care of our decimal. How many places? Here we have 2, 1, 2. Here we have 1. We have to move it 3 places. Our decimal place is right here. Our decimal is right there. We need to move it three places to the left. And of course, it's not a surprise. We only know it's 16.86 because that's what we said. We just agreed it's a little bit more over 16. It's not 186. It's rather, it's not 168. It's not 1.68. It's got to be 16.86. What it is? We're going to move it three places. One, two, three. 16.16.86 is the answer. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay.
We will continue tomorrow. We'll finish up the rest of the remaining of the problems, four through ten tomorrow. Right? I know.